Hello YouTube. Um, for the last three days I've been sick in bed and I don't mean standard British workforce sick day. Uh, when you work for yourself that doesn't really happen. Um, you know you really are on your deathbed if you're sick. Well that's what I've been anyway. Man flu. Anyway <coughs> long story short um, when you've got all that time you start thinking god what could I possibly do with this time. Um, you really don't want to turn your head to work but you can turn your head to kind of more fun things. Um, so I have been looking at Pi Hole. Um, Pi Hole is um, a piece of software that you uh, can install on any Linux machine. So I um, actually haven't installed it on a Raspberry Pi. I've, re I've installed it on a Debian Jesse instance, um, virtual machine instance in Hyper-V, um, which is my preferred way of working because I like Hyper-V. I use it all the time um, at work and um, it is just basically brilliant. Um, lots of people would disagree, I'm sure. Let's not get into that. Um, but anyway, here's a really good uh, guide on how to, let me just pull this up. Um, here's a really good guide on how to get your Hyper-V Debian 8.3 on. Um, if you go to this website, thanks, Um Don't really know much about this chap, about it's me, it's not, not much there. But this is actually a really good post, it's very um, detailed. Basically it tells you that you've got to use PowerShell to uh, set up your virtual machine um, VHDX file because this allows you to set the block size to one megabyte rather than, I think it's four, uh, 4096K is the default. Uh, but yeah, it's, uh, it's very simple, very simple to do, but just kind of some gotchas that this guy has looked at and dealt with and helps you through the process. Nice visual kind of thing, how to install Debian on Hyper-V. Anyway, once you've done that, downloading Pi Hole from the Pi Hole website um, is a matter of uh, piping curl to bash, which is generally, you know, should come with a health warning. Uh, don't ever do this, except, you know, I just did and I'll let other people argue about that. But basically, Pi Hole is um, touted as the black hole for internet advertisements. Network-wide ad blocking via your own Linux hardware. Um, mine is Windows hardware running a Linux virtual machine, but you get the message. So you literally go through that guide on uh, cliberty.com um, and you can Google for something like installing Debian on Hyper-V, if you like. Or frankly, you just not do it in Hyper-V. That's what I'm sure most people will uh, think is the right approach. Um, and uh, yeah, there we go. So we run uh, the Pi Hole installation and bosh, you are given a new DNS server in your own network that you um, go onto your router, change your DH, DHCP server to point towards your new DNS server. Um, mine is on a static address, which is obviously a very good idea for things like DNS. Um, and hey presto, as you can see, it is turned on. Um, one cool little thing um, that I've done with that is, fine, I'll show you this. I have managed to get Amazon Echo I didn't want to say the A word because it it's a bit of a trigger warning um, to turn it on and off. So that when you're browsing things and you get really annoyed because it's, you know, picked up a, um, a false negative or whatever, uh, you can just quickly turn it off. Um, and I would do that by saying, Alexa, turn off ad blocker. Okay. And then I hit refresh on the page and offline. Alexa, turn on ad blocker. Oh. Alexa, turn on ad blocker. Okay. There we go. Off and on quickly. Good, eh? Um, so the way that I've done that is using um, the beloved and hated OpenHab. Um, I've just created a switch item in OpenHab. Um, where is it? Here we go. I can also turn it on and off from here or from my mobile interface, um, uh, which is obviously a lot easier. Um, so that's a good way to turn it on or off as well. But you create the switch item in OpenHab, and then I'm using a, 
um, a Philips Hue emulator, which is a piece of software. I think it's Python. Let me pull it up, actually. Um, oh, there's a problem with running software on a Windows Server instance. It's never a good idea, is it? Uh, go away. Adobe software is to blame for this, by the way. Absolutely appalling, appalling crap. I'm gonna just leave that in the background. Um, so this is, um, here we go. Yeah, this is the Hue emulator. Um, and um, let me show you that again. So Alexa, turn on ad block. Okay. There you go. Hue light requested found device named Adblock. So basically this little server here, um, this little service um, can be programmed with an interface um, like so. Pop. These are all my devices. As you can see, I can do other things like Alexa, set bedroom lights to two. Okay. You can see the lights changing. I've left this one on here because that's not on. That's not automated. Alexa, set bedroom lights to five. Okay. Great. And my little wall controller updates as well. Alexa, set bedroom lights to three. Okay. You can see them all changing there. Hurrah. Anyway, so that's um. That's what I use. I use, um, it's called, let me pull up the actual software, which, sorry I'm being a bit slow, really have been incredibly ill. I'm not really very great and I'm not planning on cutting this video so this must be a bit boring to watch, but maybe it'll be useful or interesting to somebody. Let's go into, sorry for the heavy breathing as well, literally. I think um, this infection has really got to my lungs and it's made it very difficult to breathe. Um, anyway, uh, here it is, Open Hub. And it's called Amazon Echo HA Bridge. And it is a Java file. In fact, it is not uh, whatever I said before. Um, and I've got this little script Actually, this start Q, start Mayfield, start Verbena, they're my server names. Well, these are previous servers that I've used. I just didn't delete the files. And it basically just does this. Uh, yeah, it's on Java, Amazon Echo Bridge, blah, 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 blah. Set your server port. Ooh. Yeah, that, that is correct, in fact. So that's really all there is to it. You launch that Java um, program. It runs here. You get your Amazon Echo devices to pick up all the devices that you've set through the web interface here. And it's a very nice web interface, so very easy to kind of create new items. Um, so for example, in Open Hub, I mean, this is generic, this will work with anything. Um, it will just make a, a web call or a re web, web request, um, which I've pointed towards my Open Hub server. So let's take the one called Adblock Edit. Down here, this is what it does. Command pi hole on or off is command pi hole off. And yeah, that's good. And then there is actually a URL for um, the API in pi hole. But I'd be blown if I can find it. 10.1. There we go. Enabled. I'm not going to show you this. Oop. I'm going to show you this without my auth code because that is specific to my installation. Anyway, but basically it looks like this. Admin API enabled and then you put your auth code in there. It's very, very, very long, so that's only a small part of it. Um, let's see that. Um, yeah, so that's how it works. It's pretty neat. Um, I actually haven't had a great amount of success using Pi-hole. Uh, so far because I've not really customised it or done very much to it. I quite like the monitoring um, that it does um, because of obviously all of your web requests now go through that as the DNS server so all 
um, every device on your network, even your Echoes and your Google Home Assistants, everything goes through your Pi Hole now. So it's quite useful to see what's happening on your network. If your router uh, doesn't support it, which it probably doesn't make it very easy for you at least. Anyway, I'm waffling now. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it's of some use to someone. Good luck. See you soon.